Hey everybody, hope you've all had a great start to 2021. Uh, this video is a third part of a series of videos, so be sure to check out the first two parts of this series. But if you're new to my channel, the context for this is that I was a minister or servant and a regular pioneer, and I stopped all these activities with the view of fading away. But because of a request my mum made, she asked me to at least discuss these issues and questions I had with my elders. The first two videos on my channel cover what was said in the initial meeting. And basically the whole uh, tone of the elders were just, you know, they were listening and they didn't respond that much. Now this recording is of a meeting that was arranged a couple weeks later. And this one was... Basically, the elders were trying to see what my real motives were, which is very telling that they can't simply answer my questions. They can't really defend their truths, but they have to try to see what my reasons for asking the questions were. I offer this as an inside look into what a person should expect, uh, who's wondering whether to simply fade or to discuss things with the elders before they leave. As you'll probably pick up, my tone and attitude in this meeting has changed. And the reason for that is that I didn't really want to come across as... Um, I didn't want to share everything I knew about the organization with the elders because that would cause them to be very defensive and I didn't want that straight away. Um, I just wanted to give them their best chance at trying to convince me that this is the truth. Uh, see, I pretended that I was still confused as to whether this was the truth or not. Uh, I'm planning to make a another video series going over uh, roughly 10 things I learned from all this experience and possibly my advice to anyone who is in the same situation as me. I uh, hope you can put up with the low quality of audio uh, thanks and yeah so um, other other sources like disagree with that saying it's 587 so that that's just one problem yeah that i had with that teaching basically we're the only ones that say uh, jerusalem was destroyed in 607 um all other secular sources or just other cuneiform tablets say it happened 20 years later in 587. And another part is, yeah, Daniel chapter 4. It's pretty hard to see how that applies to, has a greater fulfillment to God's kingdom. Um, it's only explaining how Nebuchadnezzar uh, became an animal for seven years and then. Yeah, his, his rulership was interrupted and then he, it was um, started up again. Yeah. So, before we talk about the specifics of those prophecies and the chronology, mm. um, the brothers were saying that you're not attending any meetings or participating in any of the activities in the congregation. Yeah. Can I ask you why you would make that choice? based on a misunderstanding or not getting understanding those issues. Yeah, so um, that's like a massive doubt and I would say like that whole teaching is like one of the foundations of our teaching or our organization. So if I have doubt in that, a lot of things, other things get questioned and yeah, that's why I'm taking a break just to really think and um, like try to prove the things I believe in. Yeah. Do you really believe that that is a foundation teaching? Um, like we believe that Christ started ruling invisibly in 1914. And yeah, I would say that, that is a, one of our main teachings at least. Well, it's certainly um, an important day. And um, the thing is, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't the only ones that believe that. Yeah, that's true. So, just... Um, I've just got a 
Scotch tear around and call it the Ewing. Let's have a look at some questions that mm. confident in a world beset by doubts. It's the 1980 August the 1st article. Mm. Um, you know, every one of us can have doubts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That article, um, have you had a look at that article at all? Is um, that one that you would think think recall at all? No, I can find it. Yeah. I think JLP.org has been updated with older magazines. The world often um, works on the principle that nothing is true mm. and everything is questionable. Have you noticed that? Um, yeah. Um, what's the what's the again? August the first, nineteen eighty. Confident in a world beset by doubt. Yeah. So go to paragraph um, nine. Mm. And it's asking the question, is Christian confidence any less important in our day? In a world where, to quote British philosopher Bertrand Russell, an easy and elegant scepticism is the attitude expected of an educated adult. Do you understand what he, he was saying there? Yeah. Um. What's he trying to say? So basically, to be viewed as educated or smart, uh, your attitude should be questioning everything, basically. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, in the street you find people do that. Ah, the Bible. Mm. Yeah. That's common. Mm. Um, then it goes on to say, answers the question, no, if anything, firm conviction is even more important because more than ever, what does it say, the spirit is really on there? Mm -hmm. That now operates in the sons of disobedience, encourages mistrust and doubt. Yeah. And then it goes on and says, therefore the Christian who is beset by doubts should do what? Um, should recognize the danger and take the necessary steps so as to finally to stand complete and with firm conviction. So we need to consider our motive for doubting. Mm. Why am I doubting about that? Is it relevant or is it just something that I can overcome? Mm. Um, and these questions that are listed in paragraph 10 are excellent to help us examine whether a doubt that we have is, is necessary to pursue. Mm. Notice the first question. Yep. Uh, where did I learn that God's name is Jehovah? What is, oh, what that name means? What is God's loving purpose for mankind? Why has he has allowed suffering to go on so long on earth? Yeah. Mm. So how would you answer that? Where would you have learned that? Um, through the, uh, God's organization. Yeah. Second question. Mm. Uh, who taught me that Jesus Christ is not second part of a Trinitarian Godhead, but Jehovah's only begotten Son, who was it that helped me to, un or who was it that helped me to understand the full meaning of redemption from sin through Christ's ransom sacrifice? Yeah. Mm. So when you believe in the Trinity, you don't really believe in the ransom. No. It's a waste of time because as far as they're concerned, God's on earth. God died for mankind, and that's not true. Mm. Mm. So you see, those two things there are pillars mm. of faith. This building here 
stands up, mainly because of that pillar behind you, mm. and there's a few more around. Mm. No? Mm. They're built in, and the rest is doing a bit of work, but without them, mm. it would crumble. So yeah. that wall is important, but not as important as that. So some of our teachings are like that. Mm. Some of the other teachings that we have, that we understand, that fill in the picture, mm. help us to have an idea of what Jehovah has done and will be doing. Mm. But they are not the pillars of our faith. So we've just looked at two pillars. There's another one. Mm -hmm. What religion cleared up in my mind the question of the Holy Spirit? That it's Jehovah's active force. And where have I found a group of persons who sincerely endeavour to produce the privilege of the Spirit? Now, why do you think that question is being posed there in the framework of when you have doubts? Mm -hmm. The one about a uh, fruitage of the Spirit? Yeah. Um, I guess if you have the fruits of the Spirit, or you're trying to display them, um, God will help you through doubt. True. Mm. And He has an organization that will assist you. Mm. And there is no other organization that I know of, I don't mm. know about you, but Frank, mm. that is able to do what Jehovah's people have done. No, I don't know any other. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. These questions that we've been looking at here, mm. you know, can you remember when, in your study of God, when they were established clearly? Mm. Yeah, you know, when we think back to our study of God's Word. Yeah, though at the very start. Yeah, 1870. Oh, sorry, you're talking about um, the history of God's organization, not my study. Well, yeah. Yeah. for you and then also for the early brothers. Yeah. Mm. These questions were, these were the first, we talk about the established things, these were the things that Russell mm. was able to, in the group of brothers, clear up to establish the truth. Mm. So, and there's more, you know, like the, there's other questions there. Which religious organization set me straight on the ancient pagan idea of the immortality of the human soul? Mm. You know, we don't have to go through what that means. Yeah. You understand that. Preaching, another one. Mm. No other organization does it like Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, and the last one, what group of Christians genuinely have love among themselves? Mm. You've probably demonstrated that in a far greater way than I have, in that you've come from another continent in Africa mm. and seen it there and then compared it here. Yeah. You know, you know. So they're all major things that mm. are like pillars that guarantee that you have made a wise decision. Mm. But not everybody has come to that conclusion. Because they don't want to. They don't want to make that choice. But we, Pat, we dedicated ourselves based on answers to those questions, haven't we? Yeah. So, do you think then that um, it's important that if we have any query that interferes with our satisfaction and what we feel is true, mm. that we need to stay close to Jehovah's organization? and find help to assist us to not allow our faith to be wrecked. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Get help if you have doubts. That's right. So notice it says in paragraph 12, keep a positive attitude as the heading, to avoid catching the spirit of the world, the spirit of suspicion, mistrust and scepticism, it is necessary to do what? So paragraph 12, um, 
to watch one's deeper motives. Yeah, and do you notice the example mentioned there with the 11 faithful apostles? What did Jesus bring to their attention? Um, so he asked them, why are you troubled and why is it, is it doubts come up in your hearts? Hmm. Do you know what the situation was? To bring them there? Luke 24. Yeah. I could guess. Let's have a look. Oh, so it was after his resurrection. Yes. And they couldn't believe that he was resurrected. Mm. And he had to show them his hands, feet, so that they couldn't believe it's Jesus. Mm. So, okay, so what should they have noticed? That it was Jesus? No, in what way would they have noticed? Um, they've spent like three years with him and he's only disappeared for three days he's come back they should have remembered all how he was yeah. and also the way he's speaking to them mm. and yet they had serious doubts yeah because their faith had been um, compromised if you like mm. you just think about that they've witnessed amazing things that Jesus had done and taught so much mm. on how to live their life and what to do. And yet, that's the predicament they were in. And sometimes we can find that can happen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they really wanted him to take up his kingdom real there and now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted it. And here he went and died. Mm. It's true. Yeah, I mean, they went back to their fishing business mm. because they were, it's just it, it's gone. All right, it's finished. It's, it, yeah, yeah. And it can be that serious that as Paul brought to the attention of the brothers later in Hebrews 3, just have a look at that, verses 12 to 15, maybe you could read it. So Hebrews chapter 3. Yeah. 12 to 15, I think it is. Mm. Right. It says, Beware, brothers, for fear there should ever de develop in any one of you a wicked heart, lacking faith, but drawing away from the living God. But keep on encouraging one another, one another each day, as long as it is called today so that none of you should become hardened by the deceptive power of sin. For we actually become partakers of the Christ only if we hold firmly down to the end the confidence we had at the beginning. It is said, today, if you listen to his voice, do not harden your hearts as on the occasion of provoking to bitter anger. Mm. So verse 12 is the key, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What do we have to be aware of, all of us, no matter who we are? Uh, develop a wicked heart that's lacking faith. So that's a fairly strong you know, description. And we're not saying that you're a wicked person, just mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not the cancel here. But, um, mm -hmm. Jesus could say that because he knew the power of doubt. Mm -hmm. and, well, Jesus... Yeah, yeah. The other eleven, they were sort of teetering, mm. but he had confidence that they would get over it. But he gave them that kind of thing. You know, it's just a thing that it's cool. Beware, beware. Mm. So when you beware, mm -hmm. uh, what do you do when you beware of something? You're like alert to something happening yeah. so you're going to stay away from it. Do you know all the ins and outs when you beware? Um, no. You don't? So I went on a bush walk for one week, seven days, 20 kilos, no tracks. Mm. I had an idea of where I was going, never been there before. Mm. And it was a physical exertion to get up into the mountains and camp 
The weather could have turned bad, it did. We had to live in our tent for two of the seven days because it was too wild and windy outside. Mm -hmm. And we lived in a tent not much bigger than this table. Mm. Two people yeah. lying down. Mm. Yeah. And there were other things. That, I mean, we had a nice time as well, but mm. it was part of it that was a little bit difficult. But you don't know exactly what's going to happen on the journey mm. and even the journey of life. There will be mm. tests. Yeah. So you have to be on guard. And you know, something that really highlights that is the situation that um, occurred with Eve. Um, do you remember Eve's situation and what infected her mind? Mm. What was it that, that Satan said to Eve? So he said, you become like God. Knowing good and bad. Yeah, and before that he said, Is it really so? Mm. How did you go on? Oh. Have a look in Genesis 3, verse 1. Yeah, so he said, Did God really say that you must eat? You must not eat from every tree of the garden. Right. So did he say anything of any consequence? Did he provide any guarantee? Um, no. Yeah. Did he? No, no oh, you're okay. right. Mm. Yes, you're right. He didn't. So it was an innocent sounding question that interfered with her decision making, wasn't it? Mm. Now, do you see that? I mean, like we read that and we know the story and we can tell anyone about it. But mm. I mean, you think about it, it's a pretty serious situation in the end. Mm. 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 Um, and that's what Satan can do by mm. throwing into our mind or when we go off on a tangent on things that really are, you know, like it's good to investigate and study, but mm. if they start interfering with how we believe and we know that we have the truth, mm. that can lead to problems. Yeah. yeah and it did for me. Mm. And she lost out on everlasting life because of it. Yeah. Mm. So it, I thought that was uh, quite interesting that a perfect woman and her husband, the perfect man who knew even better than she did, mm. chose a course willfully to uh, endanger their spiritual relationship with Jehovah. Mm. So I'm, we're only raising that in that um, it sort of matches in with a lot of warnings that mm. Jesus gave to his closest disciples. Mm. And then they, in turn, after years of experience, also passed on to the larger brotherhood. For instance, James. Mm. Do you remember what he said about one's faith? Um, well, James. So he spoke about um, a lot about that incident in the Garden of Eden. And James talking about if you keep looking at something, you eventually lead to doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. And probably in the first chapter of James. Mm. Have a look at that. Faith with works? Yeah. Oh, without works, okay. James 1, 5 mm. verse 6. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, verse 5 is good. So if anyone of you is lacking in wisdom, keep, uh, keep asking God. Mm. But then 6, notice it concentrates on an aspect of our um, fruitage of the Spirit. It says to do what? Um, so, but let him keep asking in faith, not doubting at all. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and blown about. Yeah, mm. right. So, I don't know, does it, like those questions that we looked at there mm. and then the reasoning on Eve and the other council, it's mm. good for all of us. Mm. Do you think that would help you to feel a little bit more confident about the teachings that Jehovah's Witnesses have discerned? Yeah. In the need to really properly understand why mm. we believe other things? Yeah. Because chronology, it's not the basis for why we worship Jehovah. No. Dates. Mm -hmm. You know, Daniel didn't even know he was going to be 
he wrote. Mm. But what did Daniel do? He said this will be sealed up until some day someone will understand it. But as far as his faith is concerned, mm. and he was transported mm. from the centre of true worship in Jerusalem, which was destroyed, mm. to a pagan city and had to live his life there. Now, if you imagine a new Jaskin had that experience, mm. you could easily have doubted that Jehovah was with you as a people. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. You see, he understood the chain of events and why, and he never allowed that to his faith to waver. So Jehovah used him to write down prophecies that we now understand. Mm. And over time, the uh, faithful, discreet slave has uh, found the need to um, adjust our thinking on some of those things because the light gets brighter. But it hasn't really ever dissolved mm. what we believe, which are pillars of our faith, like we then talked about before, the knowledge of Jehovah as a person, mm. and all those other things, those questions we looked at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so why do you think we're examining the motive here of doubt mm. and not so much um, what I'm doubting. Yes. Um, the motive is basically the mo most important thing. It is. Yeah. Um, you could have a motive of a motive of trying to prove everything you hear wrong, and that's not being humble. But yeah, there's another motive of yeah. trying to find out things generally. Yeah, and it's it's mm. good to be there, like you've done. Mm. No doubt about that. Mm. But if you don't understand something, you need somebody with wisdom and knowledge to help you mm -hmm. get the point now. I mean, we all make choices in the end, whether we're, you know, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we've got to mm -hmm. um, prove our faith. And I can't do that for you. Yeah. Nor can Frank for anyone. Mm -hmm. So you need to do that. Yeah. But um, if you need help, mm -hmm. where are you going to get it from? From yourself. And from Jehovah's organization and Jehovah. Oh, yeah. so, so what is Jehovah's organization providing mm. to enable us to stand firm and not waver and not be like tossed mm. about in a boat at sea? Where has that happened? I'll take the arrangement. Um, yeah, the way we're organized. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Where, where are we all strength? Where do we get our, as, as both Daniel and myself, where do we get our strength from? I would say, associating together the meetings and, yeah, the ministry. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 10. Mm. What's the first? Yeah, not to forsake. Mm -hmm. when we, mm. And the reason why? Um, like to stir each other up. Yes. In a good way. Yeah. So where we get our strength from is where we feed at the table of Jehovah. Mm. Is from mm. And at this point you have said no to the Yeah. So, like, what do you reckon I should go about in this situation? Well, after our discussion, mm. do you believe that Jehovah's arrangements through his organization, mm. in our case, that's at the whole thing of all, mm. uh, um, something that you can re-establish to you, your spiritual welfare? Do you, mm. Can you get to the meetings and... Um, Continue to be involved in the work Jehovah's given us to do. Mm. How do you feel about that? Even though you've got questions, mm. which we can look at, mm. but you know, we're talking about why we are mm. you know, that doesn't stop just because we have a doubt. Mm. Yeah. What do you think? Um. So, 
like I've spoken to now like a lot of elders. Like on Friday, two other elders came and they yeah, shared things with me from oh no 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 from another club. I think it was Tim Nation and Theo. They just though I think they're witnessing around the area and they yeah they drop by. Um, yeah, so I think with with that um, like the situation I'm in. Yeah, the reason why I haven't been going to the meetings is like, I'm taking a step back yeah, to look at like what do I truly believe because um, yeah, the reason why I got baptised, dedicated is because I knew this was God's organisation, teaching the truth and um, this is the purpose of life. Yeah. So at the moment I'm, I'm trying to reaffirm that. Yeah. Do you think being away from the meetings would help you do that? Um, it would help me in some way, yeah. Because okay. when I was um, when I was going to the meetings, like just a couple, two weeks, I would still have yeah things in my mind. Like I know in my talk, yeah, uh, nineteen fourteen, six or seven is not really a proven date. So with that in my mind, yeah, I'm, I'm going to the meeting. It's it's pretty hard, and to even like give talks, stand up on the stage and give talks. Yeah. But what about if you're at the meeting taking in knowledge, mm. building up the strength, the spiritual strength, mm. and not having to participate? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things at the meeting that are really good. And yeah, I agree. Mm. Um, all the knowledge that we get. So mm. can you see how, you know, it's a little bit like, say for instance, you were thrown in prison. Mm. And they opened the door and they shoved in a plate of food, and it was not very good. Mm. And you said on Monday night, the first night you're in prison, I'm not eating that, it's garbage. Mm. So you check it back and I take it away, and then the next morning something else comes under, and you think, oh, I'm not eating that, mm. it's not fun, you to Looks like a bit of dirt on top of the rice. Mm. So you don't eat it. And that goes on for a day or so, you're getting pretty hungry. Mm. If you kept that up, what would you happen to? Oh, you would die. Right. So at some point, mm. you're going to have to make a decision on whether you're going to eat the food that's not what you really want, mm. so that you can stay alive. Mm. Spiritually, that's the position you're in. Yeah. If you come to the meeting, and there might be things that you are concerned with, mm. maybe little flecks of dirt that are sitting there. But if you don't go, mm. what's happened? Um. Yeah, I'll be starving. Yeah. Mm. So you're not questioning that everything is wrong. There's some question about yeah. one or two things. I would say 80% of what we believe or what we teach, I agree with that. Right. Mm. So wouldn't it be wise to keep strengthening yourself spiritually at the meeting? Otherwise, what you, what are you, who's feeding us? Mm. Who's giving us the spiritual food? Yeah, uh, I would say that's another question that I'm... Like re-examining, because I asked, yeah, the, uh, when Frank and Dave were, were talking together about that whole teaching of the faithful and discreet slave. Um, yeah. well, it's not man that's teaching us. Oh, yeah, it's Jehovah, 100%. Mm. Mm. So if you believe 80%, mm. then 80% of what Jehovah says is good, mm. but 20% you're not sure. Mm. So why would you only, what, why would you not eat 80%? Mm. Yeah, and you know what I mean? yeah, I see what you're saying. Even when we met together, I said, um, depending on what I hear, like with all these questions, some of them are not really important because I've always had them, and they're not really going to make me leave. For example, the generation teaching, um, yeah, I, I don't really care with that one. That won't make me leave the truth, but yeah, there's other things that are quite fundamental, as I would say. 
But if I don't believe in it, it means I'm not really a witness. Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm. So in, in category, mm. it was important. What are the things that are going to stop you from believing? Mm. Six, yes, so it's it's not just that. Like um, to be a witness, I think you have to believe that Christ started ruling in 1914, and the way we explain it, um, it's it started in 607. His rulership was interrupted, and yet yeah, the Gentile times, because it's part of the uh, Bible teach book. When you're coming, you're starting to be a witness. You will learn it. Yes. So if I stop believing in that. It means I no longer agree with our teachings. So I'd say that's the, probably the most important one. Uh-huh. And then, as I was saying, if that's not true, then a lot of things that we that shoot off from that, a lot of teachings, and that's why I brought up the faithful slave teaching, because we believe in 1919 he was appointed, um, with the generation and all that. But they're not, like, yeah, that wouldn't make me leave. And even the 75, like 1975 stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's not really important. Because, yeah, we, we don't serve the whole with a, with a date. Yeah. Mm. And then, what about your, the. Um... The Royal Commission stuff? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one, that's why I asked to like, step down as a ministerial servant. Well, you haven't asked, have you asked Yeah, I, I was going to ask him at the end of our discussion, but okay. yeah, just the way, yeah, the reputation we have, yeah, of, yeah, a lot of that problem so being an organization. Can I, can I ask you then on that one, mm. where have you got your information from? Mm. Yeah, so when I was getting my uh, working with children card, yeah, the website that had mo- most of the information because I searched up why do Christian ministers you need one and then yeah, one of the website was the Australian Royal Commission dot com or something. Yeah, and then there was a section about Jehovah's Witnesses and yeah. So you've got to see this is why we, we mentioned to you about um, Eve. Mm. Eve was the least experienced of the two. Mm-hmm. And what was it that Satan said to him? Um, she put a question in, in her mind saying, Did God really say that? He never said much. Mm. And you know, Satan is doing that through a number of agencies mm. in the world today. Apostates mm. have heaps of information mm. that they say is wrong to drag down. These are people that are happy in the truth. Mm. That for one reason or another have become unhappy and gone away. Mm. I mean, think about it. If you go and play football for the Crows mm. and then you choose another club, mm. do you have to drag the other one down and say it was no good? While you were there, it was fine. Yeah. Right? Mm. It's stupid. Mm. There is no purpose in it other than it manifests your own lack of wisdom uh, and the fruitage of the spirit. Mm. A spiritual person doesn't need to do that. Jehovah's Witnesses don't attack other faiths. Mm. We teach what is true from the Bible and Mm. expose false teaching, but we don't uh, have a go at at character assassinations. Mm about people. Mm. And that's what apostasy is doing. They assassinate uh, the character and good, goodness mm. of other people unnecessarily. Mm. And a lot of their teachings get spread around and copied and passed on as though it's true, but it's not. Mm. And worldly agencies don't have Jehovah's blessing. Mm. At all. Yeah, that's important stuff. Yeah. I mean, we are subject to Caesar so long as it doesn't um, contravene God's law. 
Now, to do one thing I've noticed about the Royal Commission, mm. that this issue of child abuse, is this. Mm. That it, it, it's good that it's happened. Mm. But have you noticed that it's not just religious organisations, but many different organisations have mm. fallen into the trap of problems? Yeah. So, what does that tell you? Mm. The whole of the world society mm. is subject to Satan's um, interference. Mm. And he has succeeded through the avenue of child abuse to corrupt people from any organization. And Jehovah's Witnesses are not exempt from that. Mm. And true, there will, there, there will have been elders who have been child abusers. Mm. But you see, why didn't we have an investigation 50 years ago? It wasn't a big computer then. Not necessarily. Mm. We had slavery oh. 200 years ago. Mm. And that took centuries to stop. Mm. See, it depends on what happens and how history goes and what the public feeling is and occurs. Mm. Now, the police didn't know how to deal with it. 20, 30 years ago. Women have had a raw deal for a long time. It's only in recent years mm. that women are finding that they've got a voice in the Me Too scene, mm. exposing what a lot of men do to women. Mm. So nobody had a policy. Mm. I'm not saying that the Hogan's witnesses were. Um, but some of, some of the, the, the elders couldn't have done better when they got to know about child abuse mm. amongst those in the congregation and even maybe elders who mm. were involved in it. But you see, does any of that mean mm. that Jehovah is not blessing his organisation? You know, it, it could be a, a destabilising them. I mean, that we are not perfect. Mm. There are things that have been done wrong, yeah. imperfectly. But if you compare Jehovah's organisation with any other mm. religious entity, surely, to goodness, we the standard is here, not mm. down here. With its faults, it's mm. still there, mm. isn't it? Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of things. But, yeah, with that Royal Commission, the report they said was that, yeah, we had the worst, um, I would say, ratio, like, population of all Jehovah's Witnesses compared to how many reports there are. Yeah, that ratio, they said, oh, we had okay. the worst. So, just think about how damaging that is, mm. to say that. Yeah, it is. How many people in Australia claim to be Jehovah's Witnesses? I don't know, probably 800,000 or less? Uh, was it 70,000? Mm. Oh, okay. Say it's 70,000. Mm. Mm. Alright. So if there's a thousand people, mm. I don't know, I can't remember what it was, that were accused. Yeah, I think it was 2,000 or something. Know, whatever. Mm. You think about that. 2,000, 60,000, I don't know. Mm. So that is a high percentage mm. of accusations. Mm. But how many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have we not allowed to come into our organisation? Mm. Because they were immoral sexually mm. and horribly child abusers amongst them. Mm. And for many, many other reasons. Smoking, drug addicts, thieves, criminals, murderers that were not repentant and would not change their lifestyle. Mm. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Whereas other religions who've got 250,000, mm. they don't have that standard. Mm. 
So it's all relative, isn't it? Yeah. It's all relative. Don't be deceived by worldly statistics and figures. Mm. Because it's not really a fair comparison from what I can see. Mm. You know, this is a little bit like allowing our oh, Satan's thinking to create a death without having thought it through, reasoning on it. Mm. Why are they saying that? Let's have a think about why they're saying that. Then mm. make a decision. Yeah. Um. Jehovah's Witnesses, mm. um, when they get baptised, what happens to them? Do they become perfect? No. Do they ever become perfect? Eventually they will, but not now. Mm -hmm. mm. What's that tell you? What are people, what problems do people have? Mm. Whatever they have before they got baptised, basically. Yeah. It could be. Mm. Yeah. And could um, for one reason or another look at stuff on the internet. Mm. People can do all sorts of things because they are mm. 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 How long have these problems been around for? Oh, thank you. Go back to the law. Mm. In the book of Exodus, did it cover sexual sins? Mm -hmm. So way back then. So for three and a half thousand years, let's just go back to the law, there's been all these problems. Mm -hmm. And so did Jehovah God decide in 33 CE all mankind is useless and just like that? No. What did Paul say about those who became anointed ones in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? He said a lot of things. Um, along the lines of perfection and imperfection. Did, did, he, did he not say that some were men who oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, was, yeah. submitted to homosexual acts? Mm -hmm. Some were homosexual. Yeah. Some were this, some were that. Mm -hmm. What you were. Mm -hmm. Do you see the point? Yep, I see your point. Does that change the truth? No, not really. Some of those men mm. that became anointed who are going to rule in heaven, do you believe they're going to rule in heaven? Yeah. And that's what some of them were. Mm. Fornicators, mm. adulterers. But mm. it didn't stop God from dealing with us. And mm. we have not become perfect people. Mm. And this is a big thing that people in the world stumble with, mm. is that they think Jehovah's Witnesses are perfect. Mm. They think we should be absolutely spot on all the way. Mm. How sad it is for them mm. when they find out that we do one thing because we are imperfect. Yeah, I guess with like the issue with that, um, I didn't really care if we had that problem because yeah, there's a lot of organisations with that problem. But um, like the way the the whole eight days of the commission hearing went, and when the lawyer was asking questions and stuff, like mainly my concern was the way we handle it when it comes up. Um, that could get better, and I know the brothers are trying to make it better. Have you read the report? Um, not really, no. Oh, actually, wait. There was something that came out on JW.org. Just the other day. Yeah, I, I saw that. It's out very clearly mm. the organisation's view. Yeah, and I, I know the brothers, even Jeffrey Jackson said, we want to hear what the commission says for them to improve, because you know, they want to work with them to make it better. Okay. Yeah. Prior that they had, the government had no laws on child mm. Everybody was guilty. Yeah. But you see, we live in what's called an adversarial society. 
Um, necessarily say like faith in Jehovah or Jesus um, with all the other things mm. so at the moment I'm, I'm trying to prove that um, this is God's organization and all that mm. well you need to let, let Jehovah allow you to do that yeah. and the only way you can do that is by being continuing to be involved in the arrangements Jehovah puts in place for meetings and the ministry. Mm. So with that, um, so if I do come to the meeting, I would still might have doubts and yeah, it'll well, be it'll be hard. Well, how about mm. you go away mm. and you clearly Explain to me mm. those two articles. Mm. Oh, right. Right? Yeah. What part you don't understand? As though I am a person mm. that you're teaching, mm. and if you had to teach that, mm. what the problem is? Okay. You've got to thoroughly understand it. You can't just say, oh, this mm. paragraph here, and you're, that's mm. it. I don't know anything. Mm. You've got to show me. Mm. Yeah. Can you do that? Um, Let's start with that one. Yeah, I think we can do that. Like the bits that I have doubts in, basically. Well, that there mm. is looking at the evidence, and this mm. side here is looking at what other people think mm. that they say is true. Yeah. So this is the Bible's version. Mm. Yeah. That there is 
historians and other critics version of how they justify dates. Mm. So for me, you need to explain how Jehovah's Witnesses understanding of Bible chronology mm. is in error if you really think it is mm -hmm. and why this here mm. that's the part two yeah. okay. so part two is looking at what other people say it yeah. probably is mm. so and there's some very clear um, directions in here about how trustworthy that information is mm. compared to this. Yeah. Alright. I mean you can't you can't say that something isn't right without understanding it properly and giving good reason. Yeah. But I'm not here to tell you mm. that it is right. You've got to prove to me mm. why you think it is. Yeah. And then we can talk about that. Mm. Yeah. Is that reasonable? Yeah, I think we can do that next time. Alright. So you've got to go to this going. Yeah. Um, so regarding your circumstances as a servant then mm. and a pioneer. Yeah. What what's your feelings there? Yeah, so as I said before, if I do continue, I'll be put in positions to explain things that I have doubt in or doubt about. Yeah, so that's why I, I was going to ask you if, yeah, if I could step down. Probably, yeah, involve. Mm. Do you understand how serious a decision that is? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So what, what do you think it means for you? Yeah, basically... I won't be able to do the things I used to do, like serve the congregation. Mm. Mm. Does that does that affect you? Um, yeah, it does. I I don't want to do it, but yeah, it's pretty hard to continue on with that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, I personally feel feel. The talk you've been given, a public talk. Mm. Are you going to be able to give that? Oh, I can give like most of it, except when it gets to that. Bit. Yeah, that's what I'm right. saying. And what do you want to do with that bit? Um, I, with the talk, um, I understand most of it. I agree with most of it, except for that bit. So I won't be able to give it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's why if you don't do that. Mm. Yeah, just with other things, like, for example, I have a Bible study and it's time to discuss 1914. That's going to be tricky. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, do you think, um, how do you feel in your heart about being at meetings? Um, I want to be at the meetings, but, um... Yeah, it's very hard. It's very hard. It's, with that teaching, um, I'm trying to prove other things as well. Like, this is God's organization. Because I've mentioned with um, the way our teachings change over time. Yeah, it shows that basically we are trying to be God's organization. But God's direction being divinely on us, I wouldn't say that's the case. Mm. God doesn't have an organisation made. Um, he has an organised way of doing things. But, and if he does have an organisation, uh, yeah, I want this to be the one. So, mm. but you, you, you know, you're saying it's not the one. I would say it, it probably has God's approval. And it's, it's like we are trying to follow, we are trying to work with God's purpose. Yeah, but to say that divine direction flows from Jehovah all the way down through Jesus to the governing body, like divine direction, that's what I'm trying to prove, if that's the case. Um, no, you're mm. saying it's not the case. 
you're going to have to prove that it is the case. Yeah, but I would say, I wouldn't go as far as saying, no, this is not God's organisation. I would say, this is the only organisation trying to follow God's direction. So we read the Bible and we try to send what God wants us to do and yeah, that's the case. But to say we have divine, but yeah, what I mean by divine is, you know, um, hmm. God directing us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So if, 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 if it wasn't, where else is it? Yeah. That's a good question. See, the paper has always had an organization. Mm. Whether it was the patriarchs, Abraham, yeah. the nation of Israel, as faulty as it was and as wicked as it was, he still persevered until his son came. Then mm. he changed the method of worship. Mm. And in modern times, we've now cleaned up the falsehoods of Christianity because of the apostasy mm. after the apostles died. Mm. And the way we worship is a little different. Much the same, but there are differences. Yeah, there are main So you see how Jehovah over time has adjusted mm. what he requires of us. Yeah. But he's always had one organization. Mm. And in 2018, there is one. Mm. So it's not possible to say that there isn't one. Mm. And when you look at what the world has to offer in the world, religious belief mm -hmm. I can't see anything else yeah, there's, there's no other religion to go to right. yeah. so, I don't even want to look into other religions so why question mm. why, are, why are you like a ship tossed mm. about now yeah. you know I, that to me is unusual mm. It's unusual because when you go out in a boat mm. and you find yourself in a frightening position, mm. the first thing you do is I've got to get out of this position and you just stay in water. Mm. You know, if the storm clouds are there and you start in the water, mm. and you realise, ooh, you better get out. Yeah. So you act decisively to get into safe water. And, and that's where I see that you need to be. You need to decisively get yourself back into the safety, not on the perimeter of Jehovah's organization. Do you remember mm. Jesus' illustration about the 99 sheep? Yeah. Well, 99 of them were, mm. were good, and you looked for the one. Mm. But without them, you got lost. Mm. Jehovah wants that. Yeah. to happen and we can be in that position we can be on the fringe for whatever reason mm. but to stay out here on the edge is, is, is dangerous mm. regardless of our doubts it's dangerous mm. you can't keep looking you know and, and be bewildered mm. in the thorns and the thickets you've got to get in mm. And as elders, we're happy to help you to resolve any lingering doubts. But to continue to throw it up in the air and say, oh, I'm not sure. It's like staying in the boat in the wild sea. You've got to convince yourself that the truth that you have understood, that 80% of the yeah. is right. Mm. That's your responsibility with our assistance. Yeah. And I would say, um, at the moment, I'm working hard to do that. I'm studying, uh, reading back the proclaimer book, seeing how organization started, and yeah, just to see, because what you said with God's organization, how Jehovah's always um, organized the Israelites, organized um, when Jesus was on the earth. Yeah, I fully agree with that. Yeah. So to see um, proof that God is organizing us, I would say, um, at the moment, with my understanding, it's the other way around, sort of. So it's us trying to be organized in the way that God would approve it. With like um, the faithful slave, always trying to do things God's way, which is which is good. But for us to say it's working the other way around with God divinely organizing. Us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The only reason that he's chosen this organisation is because of the to fall into the trap of believing, doubting, and thinking that there's something better and I'm not quite sure is a serious indication that your faith has been challenged mm. by possibly, probably, mm. faulty reasoning. And you need to pay attention to that by re-establishing mm. your spiritual relationship with Jehovah through his organisation that exists. There's nowhere else to go. The meetings, if you, you know, you know what it's like when you miss meetings. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Not really. You feel like you need to be somewhere. Right. So get back there, Jasper. Get back there. Don't delay. Doesn't matter what people think. The brothers love you. Yeah, I've, I've heard. And they the love one. you yeah. and they miss you and they want you there to be their friend. Yeah. If you've got doubts, we'll sit down and we'll discuss those two articles and let's bolster your faith. Mm. But in the end, you have to make a choice. Okay. I can't tell you what to do, I can just encourage you mm. with a strength does to and other brothers. Yeah. You've dedicated yourself to Jehovah. Mm -hmm. That's your life. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll give it some thought. Well, you won't be asked yeah. to do anything on the meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, don't please. worry about that. It's mm. not going to be an issue. And Frank and I will let the other brothers on the body know that you prefer not to be serving as a ministerial servant and mm. pioneer. Yeah. Um, but don't let that mm. stop you from serving Jehovah. Yeah. Uh, it mm. takes the pressure off and it allows you to re-establish your faith. Mm. Good. Right? Yeah. If you need help to continue in the ministry, just assistance to be happy out there. Mm. 
tell us. Yeah. If you don't want to take the lead in preaching because you just feel a little bit, mm, you know, mm. tell us. Yeah. Yeah. But don't stop eating the food. You can't do it by yourself at home or wherever else you think you're doing your own study. That's important. Mm. Mm. But if you avoid the food that Jehovah puts out, then you're saying you don't need what he's given. And he can provide answers to you mm. for the things that you need. And if you're not there, then mm. you're not going to get them. And there's only, you know, there's only two tables, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So if you're not eating off Jehovah's table, where are you eating? Mm. Yeah. It's hard as it might be to say, mm. you're going to be eating off Satan's table. Yeah. You're going to be listening to apostates. Mm. You're going to be taking them. I would say at the moment, I'm trying to. I'm still like on Jehovah's table. I'm trying to prove it that it is Jehovah's table. Yeah. Mm. You probably have access. We had a talk. Don't mm. listen to the voice of strangers. Mm. Remember that talk? I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. One of our assemblies. Yeah. Go back and find it. Mm. I know.